Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to the EKG case for the week of June 3rd, 2013. I hope everyone is having a very nice uh, late spring or early summer. I guess if you're in the northern hemisphere, at least that's what you are experiencing. This week's case is uh, kind of a fun case. This was uh, given to me by Dr. Al Sicchetti. Al was actually one of my attendings out at one of the community affiliate hospitals when I was in residency in Philadelphia. Al Sicchetti works at Our Lady of Lords Hospital in Camden, New Jersey. And a lot of you probably know Al. He does a lot of great emergency medicine lectures for ASEP and many other conferences out there. He's very well known for his work in pediatric emergency medicine in particular, and also cardiac stuff. And this case that he sent me was a, a really fantastic case. It gives us an opportunity to talk about ST segment elevation. It's a 27-year-old male who was uh, brought in to his emergency department with a complaint of chest pain. This patient is 27 years old, had no cardiac risk factors. Now, as Al tells the story, the patient looked somewhat uncomfortable. He wasn't clutching his chest and pouring sweat off and vomiting and complaining of pain radiating down the arm. So it wasn't a textbook presentation, but the guy clearly looked uncomfortable. And so the two main things that Al was worried about was uh, acute coronary syndrome or STEMI, given all this uh, ST segment elevation everywhere. And the other thing that he was worried about was pericarditis. Now, benign early repolarization is always a possibility as well. And maybe all these ST segment elevations are nothing and his chest pain is actually unrelated to the ST segment elevations. Anyway, now we've talked about pericarditis versus STEMI. And that's what I want to actually focus on for the most part in this particular case. And I'm just going to take you back to what we have discussed in the past. What I'd said before on some of the previous podcasts, and if you don't remember which podcast those were, just uh, send me a tweet or an email, something like that. And uh, anyway, the f step number one, when you're looking at the 12 lead, trying to figure out, is this a STEMI versus pericarditis? Step number one, you look for signs of ST segment depression in any of the 12 leads, well, actually ignoring A, V, R, and V1 because ST depression is common in those two leads in many conditions. But if you have ST segment depression in any of these other 10 leads, it's got to be a STEMI. It rules out pericarditis. It also rules out early repolarization for all intents and purposes. Well, that rule is not helpful here in this in this particular case well, because there really is no ST segment depression. So we're going to cross that out. And the next step that I've recommended you look for is, is there ST elevation in three greater than in two? If there's ST elevation in three greater than in two, it's got to be a STEMI. So let's take a look over here. Is there ST segment elevation in three greater than in two? And your answer is no. It's actually greater in two than in three. And so you really can't make any conclusions when two is greater than three. You only hope for if three is greater than in two because that points towards an answer. It points towards STEMI. So we can get rid of this as well. Next step, is there any horizontal or convex upwards? In other words, tombstone type of ST elevation. If there is, then you've got to call this a STEMI. So let's take a look over here once again. Is there any horizontal elevation or tombstone convex upwards ST elevation? There really is not. Everywhere you look, the ST segments are concave upwards, concave upwards. Uh, in fact, even over here, it's kind of concave upwards, um, a little bit concave upwards out there as well. And so this rule is also really not helpful. So let's get rid of that rule. Um, we're not going to worry about Q waves because uh, this, this only applies if you have old 12 lead EKGs to look for old um, an old EKG. And if you see new Q waves compared to a recent old EKG, then that pushes you towards the STEMI. So the main thing that we've discussed in the past is that the first thing you've got to do is look for signs of STEMI. If you don't see signs of STEMI, then you look uh, for signs of pericarditis. And the main sign of pericarditis is just looking for multiple leads with uh, PR segment depression. So let's go back to that 12 lead once again. Are there multiple leads with PR segment depression? Well, there's probably just, um, you know, maybe one lead that has nice PR segment depression. 
looking around here, there's not much else that has PR segment depression. And maybe we're just imagining that also. So you know what? This does not have PR segment depression either. And so what that means is that there's nothing, There's this is just anger here. There's nothing that really is helpful at all. Uh, that we've typically learned in terms of distinguishing STEMI versus acute pericarditis, all right? We also talked about something called spotic sign. Spotic sign, we went over in one of the videos recently, and spotic sign is when there is downsloping of the TP segment. So it looks like the QRS complexes are kind of heading downwards like that. Well, that's not helpful here because there's no evidence of a spotic sign either. So you're looking at this 12 lead EKG and wondering, is this STEMI versus pericarditis? Well, it turns out there's one more thing that I have to offer that I've, I think I've read about vaguely in the past, a long time ago. I went through my files and I couldn't find wh where I had read this, but it, it is something that's probably worth remembering. It's popped up in clinical practice. And once again, it does pop up here as well. Take a look at lead V4. In fact, take a look at the merging of the QRS complex with the T wave. And one of the things that you'll notice is there pretty much is no S, uh, ST segment at all. Essentially, you go from the QR and then suddenly you go right off into the T wave. All right. In fact, it's, uh, you might even call this a QRT uh, uh, segment. There's no S wave, right? It goes up and then boom. If you put your ear close to the microphone on your iPad or your computer, you can actually even hear in the lead where it suddenly goes boom, right? It suddenly goes off into the T wave without any evidence of a, an S wave. And this is something that has been described, not well studied, but it's something that seems to pop up uh, here and there in clinical practice as well. And when you see a QRT complex, it tends to be very highly specific for a STEMI. And that's exactly what this turned out to be. Now, Sikhetti did not miss this. He sent this patient up to the cath lab, this 27 year old with diffuse ST segment elevation and no reciprocal changes. And by the way, no cardiac risk factors. <clears throat> this 27 year old guy had a wraparound LAD lesion and uh, had Al not sent him up to the cath lab, this guy probably would have died because that's a really, really bad lesion to have. Let me show you a couple of other examples of this particular finding that uh, that's going to be worth remembering. Take a look at this 12 lead EKG. And uh, in fact, um, I'm not going to hide this from you. Take a look at what the computer is calling this also. The computer is calling this acute pericarditis. Uh, and you know, you're not supposed to look at the computer interpretation, but maybe this is a relatively young person and perhaps there's a little bit of PR segment down sloping in a few leads. Uh, maybe you have to imagine it just a little bit, but there's diffuse ST elevation without good reciprocal change. And this might be a 12, 12 lead EKG. But again, if you look in that lead V4, take a look at what's happening out here. You've got the R wave that goes up and then without much of an S wave at all, bang, it suddenly shoots out into the T wave. It's like the S wave is gone. The QRS complex got smushed right up against the T wave. So there is no ST segment. Okay. You notice that up there also. The R wave's coming down and then suddenly shoots out. It's almost like a check mark. All right, a check mark, something I refer to as the check mark sign or the QRT sign. Okay, and let me give you one more example. This, by the way, turned out to be a true STEMI despite what the computer said. And I'll give you one more example of this. I'm just going to uh, focus right in on leads V4 and V5 in this particular example. You'll notice, by the way, that there is a little bit of PR depression here. What we've said before, PR depression means nothing. It is not specific for pericarditis, despite what our teachers told us. And this is a very nice example, again, of that QRT finding or the checkmark finding where the R wave is coming down and then bang, it suddenly heads off into the, uh, the T wave in these two leads. And uh, there really is no ST segment at all. It's that little check mark that shoots right up into the T wave. There's no ST segment. It's like somebody took the T wave and just smushed it right against the QRS complex. And the result was the ST segment is completely gone. Um, and uh, so anyway, let me just sum up 
what we've talked about, very simple visual finding, which is one of the one of the clues that you'll probably see every now and then, which can also help point towards a true STEMI and away from pericarditis in some of those patients where there is a quandary. Uh, and I also like to point out once again, that young people do have MIs. This was a 27 year old man with no cardiac risk factors that Al Sacchetti took care of. And again, he saved his life by, by not being fooled by the fact that this was a young patient. Beware of computer interpretations. That second example I showed you, again, the computer called it acute pericarditis. Wrong, wrong, wrong. And the QRT sign that I'm referring to when the R wave goes up and then suddenly heads off into the T wave, there's no, practically no ST segment at all or something that I like to simply refer to as the check mark sign when the R wave comes down and then fires off into the T wave without really any nice concave upwards um, uh, ST segment at all. It just fires right into the T wave. When you see that, think about a true STEMI, all right? So there's yet one more nice, helpful finding that can be helpful when you're trying to tell the difference between pericarditis versus STEMI. Now, in my experience, this is not a really common thing. It's not something you're gonna see in the majority of your pericarditis patients. But when I have seen this, it's been very helpful because oftentimes in these cases, for whatever reason, all of our other rules don't seem to work. So when you see that QRT finding or the check mark sign, think STEMI and you just might save a life. All right, I hope that was helpful and I look forward to talking to you next week. Bye for now.